Born the son of a humble shoemaker, he saw the world not as it was, but as it could be, in numbers. Symbols whispered secrets to him that no one else could hear, and logic became his playground. Ideas that would one day power machines, shape reasoning, and like the digital age, quietly took root. This is the story of the man who turned thought into mathematics, George Boole. George Boole was born on November 2nd, 1815 in the modest parish of St. Michael's, Lincoln. His father, John Boole, made shoes but loved science and instruments. His mother, Mary Ann Joyce, managed the home with quiet strength and discipline. No one could guess that this child, born to a working-class family, would one day change the future of mathematics and machines. George was fascinated by numbers and patterns before he understood their meaning. He would ask questions that startled adults, not just how many, but why so. His father shared his small tools and books, showing him the beauty of science and geometry. For George, learning wasn't a task, it was a spark that kept growing brighter. The Boole home held few possessions, but its books were treasures. From them, George learned Latin, French and Greek, all by himself. He was drawn to language as much as to numbers, believing both could express truth. Each night he copied pages by hand, his ink-stained fingers building the foundation of a genius. Formal schooling was brief and difficult. The Boole family couldn't afford higher education, and George left school at 16 to help support them. But poverty didn't silence his hunger to learn. If schools couldn't teach him, he decided to teach himself. When the town slept, George's mind stayed awake. He studied mathematics, translating complex Latin texts without guidance. He taught himself algebra and calculus, tracing the works of Newton and Laplace by lamplight. Every page he mastered was an act of quiet rebellion against circumstance. Letters between George and his family show a boy filled with gratitude and drive. He wrote about ideas that seemed impossible, connecting language and logic. His father encouraged him even when money was scarce. These words of love and hope gave George the courage to keep moving forward. By his late teens, George Boole had become a teacher himself. He opened small schools in Lincoln, teaching mathematics and languages to local children. His lessons were simple but powerful. The world, he believed, could be understood through symbols. The young teacher didn't know it yet, but those chalk marks would one day define the language of computers. George Boole began teaching in modest schools at an age when many others were still students. His classrooms were cramped with few materials, yet he approached each lesson with precision and curiosity. He explained mathematics not as rules to memorize, but as patterns to understand. Every problem he solved for his pupils was also a step in his own self-education. Resources were scarce, but George's determination was endless. He used every scrap of paper, every borrowed book, to explore advanced mathematics. Even a simple chalkboard became a canvas for his experiments with algebra and geometry. In the midst of limitations, his imagination turned obstacles into tools. At 24, Boole sent his first paper to the Cambridge Mathematical Journal. It was called Researches on the Theory of Analytical Transformations with a Special Application to the Elimination of Eliminants. The work revealed his gift for symbolic reasoning, a glimpse of logic's future. This paper was the moment his hidden genius stepped into the mathematical world. The paper caught the attention of mathematician Duncan Gregory, the journal's editor, and Sir George Everest, the famed surveyor. They saw in Boole a rare mind, 
untrained yet precise, theoretical yet practical. Gregory began corresponding with him, offering guidance and encouragement. Boole's world, once confined to a small classroom, had opened to the great minds of Britain. By his late twenties, Boole's name began to echo through the corridors of mathematical circles. He received the Royal Medal from the Royal Society in 1844, honoring his work on differential equations and calculus of finite differences. For the first time, the self-taught teacher from Lincoln stood among Britain's scientific elite. This was not just recognition, it was proof that a man outside the system could redefine it. In 1849, at the age of 34, Bull was appointed the first professor of mathematics at Queen's College, Cork. It was his first formal academic post, a recognition earned purely through self-education. Here he found a new home, teaching, researching and shaping a department from the ground up. The self-taught schoolmaster had become a scholar of standing. Through his academic connections, Boole met Mary Everest, a brilliant young woman fascinated by philosophy and education. Their conversations blended logic and life, curiosity and compassion. Mary understood Boole's abstract world and shared his belief in the unity of science and spirit. This meeting began a partnership of minds and hearts that would shape both their legacies. From the quiet streets of Lincoln to the halls of Cork, Boole's journey had only just begun. His papers, once overlooked, were now read across Europe. He was no longer the outsider teacher, he was a pioneer of new mathematics. But even as success arrived, Boole's most revolutionary ideas were still taking shape within his mind. In 1847, Boole completed the Mathematical Analysis of Logic, a brief pamphlet that shook traditional ideas. He treated logic with mathematics, showing that reasoning could be expressed as equations. These pages contained the seeds of a system no one had fully imagined before. Even in its simplicity, it hinted at a future where thought itself could be calculated. Boole spent years refining his ideas in an investigation of the laws of thought published in 1854. He expanded symbolic logic to include probabilities and the algebra of reasoning. Every theorem was tested, every equation considered for its power to describe thought. He worked tirelessly, knowing that he was charting a path few could yet follow. Boole introduced AND, OR, and NOT operations as mathematical tools to express logical reasoning. He showed that statements could be represented as variables that were either true or false. Boole did not use the modern logical symbols like AND, OR, or NOT we know today. Instead, he used ordinary algebraic symbols and gave them logical meaning. Multiplication for AND, addition for OR, and 1 minus X for NOT. After conquering logic, Boole turned back to the heart of mathematics itself, the laws of change. In 1859, he published his treatise on differential equations, followed a year later by a treatise on the calculus of finite differences, two volumes that mapped how quantities vary and how those variations can be measured. These works brought precision and clarity to problems that had challenged analysts for decades, linking algebra, geometry and motion in one consistent language. In 1857, Boole stepped into one of the most abstract corners of mathematics, the study of definite integrals and transcendental functions. In this treatise, he explored the delicate balance between algebra and analysis, uncovering patterns in the sums of residues that others had missed. From this work emerged what is now known as Boole's identity, a subtle equation revealing hidden harmony within complex integrals. Generations later, mathematicians would find its echoes in the Hilbert Transform, a cornerstone of modern signal processing and harmonic analysis. At home, George and Mary Boole built a world of learning and affection. Their five daughters, Mary Ellen, Margaret, Alicia, Lucy Everest and Ethel Lilius, grew up surrounded by books, geometry puzzles and lively conversation. Each would later make her mark. Alicia would pioneer the study of four-dimensional geometry, and Lucy Everest Boole would become one of the first female professors of chemistry in Britain. 
In late November 1864, George Boole walked three miles from his home at Litchfield Cottage to Queen's College Cork through relentless rain. Within days, fever took hold, pneumonia set in, and his condition worsened rapidly. On December 8, 1864, George Boole died of fever-induced pleural effusion, aged only 49. He was buried in the quiet Church of Ireland Cemetery at St. Michael's Blackrock, a few miles from his college. Inside the adjoining church, a modest plaque bears his name, simple words for a man whose ideas reshaped the world. Today, computers perform trillions of calculations every second. Every digital device, from smartphones to supercomputers, relies on principles first imagined by George Boole. His mathematics of true and false, yes and no, quietly governs the machines around us. In 1937, Claude Shannon discovered that Boole's algebra could control electrical switching circuits. He realized that logical operations could be implemented in hardware, creating the foundation of digital electronics. Shannon connected the abstract world of algebra to the tangible world of machines. Boole's symbols became physical gates in circuits, and or and not operations control the flow of electricity making decisions instantaneously. Each flicker of a digital light is a direct descendant of Boole's mathematical vision. Programmers everywhere use Boolean logic to control software. Decisions, loops, and conditions in programming follow Boole's simple rules of true and false. His ideas empower engineers to design everything from apps to algorithms. The mathematics of a 19th century thinker shapes the 21st century digital world. Boole also influenced great philosophers and logicians. Pierce, Frege, and Russell expanded symbolic logic, building on his foundations. He showed that thought could be analyzed mathematically, bridging philosophy and mathematics. Boole's mind reached far beyond machines, touching the very way humans reason. Cork celebrates Boole's legacy with memorials and dedicated institutions. The Boole Center stands as a hub for research, education, and inspiration. Visitors see his influence not just in books, but in classrooms and laboratories. His memory is alive, shaping generations long after his passing. From ink-stained pages to the circuits of modern computers, Boole's ideas have become invisible engines of our world. His algebra of logic guides machines, programs, and human understanding alike. Though he never saw a computer, his mind built the rules by which they operate. George Boole's silent power continues to shape the future, proving that one mind can ripple across centuries.